What's up everybody? This is Stephen with Steve Snakesuary. Today is September 4th of 2014 and I want to talk about something special today. I don't know if you guys can hear that. What I want to talk about today is the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. Now, I had a friend a couple weeks ago. I had a friend give me this snake and I uh, appreciate you, Randy. Thanks for giving this to me. And uh, he, uh, he gave me this snake and I thought something was a little different with this snake, but I wasn't 100% positive. Uh, but anyway, so I get the snake, and a couple of days ago, we were heading out. I was doing some cleaning up around the snake cages before we were heading out, and I noticed something in this cage. And uh, so that's what I want to talk about. Let's take, take a look at these. And I'm going to put my, uh, these are bite-resistant gloves I got from Snake Professional. And uh, even though I have these, I still use my tongs. I still use my hooks. I don't freehand on my snakes, okay? Uh, I don't I don't support free handling the snakes or anything like that, but I'm going to go ahead and move the lid off. I'm going to be real careful. Move the lid over. So you guys, you know, just make sure you step back or whatever. But here's what I want to show with this. There's the mother. And check this out. Look at all the babies. One. There's one up under the mom. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Eight babies. Now, I almost had nine babies, but one of them didn't make it. One of them was, uh, wasn't either, either wasn't fully developed or what. You could see it in the little egg sac, uh, but it wasn't, uh, and it never came out of the sack. Now, you see the little buttons on these guys? See the little white buttons? Okay. And, uh, some of these guys, I'm trying to be really careful because, that, you know, we got to be real careful if I need to, I'm going to shut the, shut the lid. But I got eight little Western Diamondback rattlesnakes. Cute little things. And uh, now, one thing I want to talk about is the the Western Diamondback has a hemotoxic venom, so it messes with your blood and your blood system. And uh, now we do have anti venom for these guys here in, in the U.S. We do have anti venom for them. Now the babies. One thing I want to mention is a lot of people ask me, "What well, are the babies?" Uh, do the babies have fangs and do the babies have venom? And yes, they do. They were born with fangs. They were born with venom. Okay? And uh, rattlesnakes give live birth. They don't lay eggs. They give live birth, but they come out in a little sack. You can see part of the sack right here. One of the dried up sacks right here. That's kind of, it's kind of a gel like, uh, like a, almost like a, you know, gooey, ooey, gooey gel type thing they come out in, but they don't come out in eggs. They actually give live birth. And uh, they are, they are, ha they do have, when they are born, they do have venom, and they do have fangs. Okay, so they are able to bite, they are able to deliver venom. So that's one thing you have to be really careful of, just because, you know, they look really cute, uh, and they look harmless, but, they, you know, they are very harmless. I mean, harmful. They are very harmful, even though they look real cute. Don't go messing with them. Okay. Um, let's see. The other thing I wanted to mention was, you know, with the with the hemotoxic venom, uh, we do have the anti-venom, but it does mess with your bloodstream. And a lot of a lot of people ask me uh, with with the babies. Here's what they ask me a lot of times: Is a baby more venomous, or is an adult more venomous? And what I want to mention here is I'm going to try to explain this. Uh, the, the way I want to explain this is I'm not going to get bit to find out. I'll tell you that too. Uh, I have heard that babies haven't learned to control their venom glands yet. And I also know that larger snakes, older snakes, larger, older snakes, also understand they use their venom to help digest their prey and to help digest their food and so an older snake is going to know okay this you know a human is too big for me to eat so i'm not going to waste my venom on a human you know yes they do deliver venom but they an older snake may may give a dry bite, it's possible they get dry bites, or they may not inject a whole bunch of venom because they understand they need that venom to eat to help them digest their food, and a human is too big for them to eat. Okay, but let me also say this. you got to think about this. A smaller snake has smaller fangs. 
so it's able to deliver less venom. And a larger snake has larger fangs, so it's able to deliver more venom. So there's several ways you can look at that. You can say, well, a smaller snake may or may not know how to control its venom gland, so it may not put out as much, or it may put out more. But a smaller snake also has smaller fangs, and a larger snake has bigger fangs. So there's several ways you can look at that. So I'm not going to say that a smaller snake is going to put out more or less. I'm not going to say a larger snake is going to put out more or less. I'm not going to answer that. I'm just going to give you, you know, my thoughts on that. So, but but I will tell you this: that a smaller snake, a smaller snake, a smaller venomous snake, does have fangs and does have venom. Okay, they are able to deliver a venomous bite as soon as they're born. Okay, I do want to make that clear. Um, so you have to be be very very careful with that. Um, let's see what what else did I want to mention with these guys? I'm trying to think of the questions that people ask me about these guys. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too is a lot of people talk about poisonous snakes. These guys are not poisonous; they're venomous. Okay, poison has to be inhaled or ingested. Okay, venom has to be injected. Okay, so these guys are not poisonous, they're venomous. So I want to make myself clear on that. Make you guys, you know, just kind of correct some information there. These guys, uh, like I said, this was a smaller Western Diamondback. I've got some that are a lot larger than that. And you can see these babies are all healthy. They're all real fat and healthy looking. So I was really, really, really surprised when this, when this, uh, Mother gave birth to eight, well actually nine, but one of them didn't make it, nine babies that are all healthy. They're not real skinny, they're not, uh, you know, real, you know, I've, I've had some babies come out real small and real skinny, and these guys aren't. These guys look real fat and real healthy, so, uh, awesome. I'm, I'm really, really excited about that, really excited about that, so. And one thing I wanted to point out, uh, hopefully all my friends aren't going to see this and want this one. I'm not sure, can you see this one? He's got like a stripe going down his neck. Can you see that stripe on his neck? And all these other dudes kind of had just like little blood. That one's kind of got a little stripe right there. But see, this one's got like a little, it starts their little patterns right behind his head. But this dude's got a real long stripe going down him. I thought that was really, really cool. So I'm hoping all my friends don't see that one. I go, oh, I'm buying that one. I want that one. I want that one. You know, hold that one for me. So, uh, but anyway, this is something that really... Uh, really excited me this last week. I was really excited actually when I walked by it. She was rattling her tail and I saw one of the heads coming out of the tail. So I thought that was really exciting when I came and saw those babies. And uh, really awesome. Really, really awesome and exciting for that. So this is my first rattlesnake litter ever. Appreciate you, Randy, for, uh, for giving the snake to me. And we'll see. We're going to separate these guys later on this week. Probably this weekend we're going to separate these guys, put them in individual cages so we can keep track of their, their feeding schedule and things like that. And, uh, you know, I don't keep I don't keep little babies like this in a big group for very long because I like to keep track of individual feeding schedules and things. So, But that's a Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. Again, they have hemotoxic venom. The babies are fully developed with fangs and venom glands. They can not deliver a venomous bite, so you have to be very careful. It's a hemotoxic venom. But oh, we do have the anti-venom here in the U.S. We do have the anti-venom for these guys. So, But again, you know, I've, I, I, I use my tongs, I use my hooks, and I do have my bite resistance gloves from a snake professional. So I am very, very cautious with these guys. I don't freehand on my stuff or anything like that. So be very, very cautious. Uh, the other thing I want to mention since we do have these in the U.S. is, you know, a lot of people go hunting, you know, and they're out in the woods a lot and they run across rattlesnakes and... I know it's easier said than done, but if you run across these guys, if you happen to get bit, be very, very careful. I know it's easier said than done, but you really have to stay calm. Because if you do get bit, what's going to happen is, uh, we do have anti-venom, but what happens is a lot of people, they start freaking out. Their, their pulse rate goes up. Their breathing increases. And because their pulse rate goes up and their breathing increases, uh, what happens is they get poor perfusion, which means, you know, the oxygen doesn't get to the cells very well, and they go into shock. And I know it's easier said than done, but the best thing to do would be stay calm. Stay very, very calm. And, uh, you know, try to control your breathing. 
which will help control your heart rate, and that will slow the spread of the venom. Don't try to suck the venom out. Don't put a tourniquet on it, and don't put ice on it. What that does is a tourniquet and ice is actually going to isolate that venom, and it's going to localize it, and that's going to cause more tissue damage in that one spot, which may cause you to have, uh, have to have an amputation. So don't use a tourniquet. Don't use ice. And stay very calm because we do have antivenom here. You should be able to get to a hospital in time to get the antivenom. And, uh, but just stay very calm, you know, and try to control your breathing, which is going to help control your heart rate, and it's going to slow the spread of the venom. So just some tips if you're out hunting and you run across a rattlesnake out there. Uh, just be very, very careful, if you, you know, and then if you get bit, just try to stay calm. So, But again, this is Stephen with Steve Snakesuary, and we're going to show you guys the new additions to the Snakesuary. Some, rattle, uh, some Western Diamondback rattlesnakes. Very, very exciting. So if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them in the... Uh, in the comment section below and also check out my website at uh, snakesuary.com and if you have any other questions you can email me from the website also again Steve, Steve Snakesuary with some Western Diamondback babies and we'll